Hello, and welcome to Keep Hope Alive podcast. We have a great show for you today. I've been talking with Miss Cindy Clark and her cute little doggy, Hope. We can see Hope there too. Hi, Hope. <laughs> so she's, she's an author. She has a wonderful book called God's Rainbow of Hope. And she has two more, I guess, kid books. We're going to be talking about everything. And her doggy has a special tree. And I think we're going to have another surprise. But before we get started, my famous question is how many weddings have you been to in the last 15 years well I can only think of two right now and um, they were the best um, one of them well I didn't get to go to the one because it was my nephew and he um, got married Jordan got married in um, Texas and I was not able to go there but <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. That treat to my pocket and she's trying to get into but Oh anyway, yeah, that's what my dogs would do. <laughs> um he um got married there in Texas and then Morgan, my niece, got married um at the house that she grew up at my brother's house, um, outside. And that was okay. a beautiful wedding. And um, the thing about that is um Jordan got married to Mor uh, Morgan, which was his sister's name, you know, the, that I told you about. And uh -huh. um, now, you know, her last name is the same as what his sister's name was. So it's, the full name is Morgan, but I guess I could say the last name. I don't know. I hope they don't get on to me. <laughs> but anyway, I guess I won't say the last name. But, um, but it's the same exact name, you know, so it's almost, she, he's living with, you know his sister's name and um you know she had gotten married it was a good yeah. thing she got married morgan got married my my niece um uh -huh. before he got married because we would have had two of the same names in the same house i mean you know the same family that, so, anyway. that's interesting that really is with the names funny. everything and <laughs> so well usually you know when we go to a ceremony, whether it's outdoors or in a church, the guests are walking through and they have to sign this one thing. What is that called? A guest, guest book, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Well, one of our biggest sponsors here is lifeonrecord.com. And what they do is they have a vintage rotary phone they put out for the guests to pick up and leave their congratulations or, you know, maybe it's a groomsman going, it's about time you put a ring on that finger. But right next to it, they have a QR code. So you can take out your cell phone, scan that. You can leave a message either before or after the wedding. And what they do is collect all these messages and burn it either on a 12 inch vinyl record or they have a keepsake speaker, which I call the little boom box. <laughs> and it's amazing because it's like the gift of voice. I love hearing voice. It's something I would do. Like if I got married again, I'd be on my one year anniversary. I just want to kick back and listen and have a slice of my top cake. I don't even know if they still do that. I think people do, but um, so it just makes it a great thing to have for any event not only weddings I mean birthdays reunions and yes I'm going to say it funerals so it's something that we like to hear back and listen to so you get the phone number itself for one year their plans start at $99 which is good and to find out more information about them you can visit www.lifeonrecord.com all right, well, let's roll in. Cindy, my famous question again, who is Cindy? <laughs> who is Cindy? Sometimes I wonder, I don't know who Cindy is sometimes, but um, the main thing is I'm a Christian. And when I say that, that does not mean that I'm perfect, um, but um, that's what I strive for is to 
you know, be a good Christian example to others and everything. And um, I, I love to encourage others, and I, I like to sing, um, and I like to, you know, sing it, sing for people that need encouragement. And um, I ended up, it wasn't my dream to be honest, but I ended up being a Christian writer. To an oh author. wow! Um, that all happened. Um, apparently, that was God's plan for me, and uh, I enjoy it all and everything. Yeah, I mean, finding your purpose in life and following those steps. I mean, from singing and writing, you've got a creative soul. <laughs> That's so I, I do it for God. So um, he's so, I couldn't have done any of it without him because my worst fear was getting up in front of people and singing. And so I ended up doing it anyway. So um, That's good. That's good. It's encouraging to people and, you know, hearing nice, beautiful harmonies from singing. That's amazing. So I hope you'll be singing for us today. <laughs> trying my little dog's gonna be doing hopefully she'll be doing her tricks too so because she does yes um, she dances and stuff in my shows and really seems like she's the star of the show so so little hope is a dancer i love that can you see, can you see her can, i she, don't actually how are you there oh she's over oh, there just waiting she's waiting for her treat so. <laughs> <laughs> well we are definitely going to get to that dance and hope we'll get the treat and everything now your books is something amazing i was looking over so tell us about the story and i will even say how, how god led you to write the story well the um first one started out um it's um I, I need to redo this one too it's called a believer's journey and it started out um i went can, can you see it okay yes i can i'm putting my glasses on because i am okay. blind as a bat sometimes and it's it's more like a diary of faith and uh -huh. it started when me, a friend of mine took me on a rocky mountain trip with her two children and um and that was my dream is to go to the Rocky Mountains and so she took me there and um her and her husband um paid for my whole trip and everything and I well I enjoyed helping her watch her children too during that time. But um and my husband had given me a little um book so I could write about my trip. And so I started writing about the trip and um then I got this call that my mother-in-law, um, my husband's mother was in the hospital and um, she was passing away. And so oh, we, but, um, my friend had other plans too. We, you know, she had planned on going to her mother's house and taking some stuff there, some important stuff. And so she decided to just cancel it short and, and not go. And yeah. so we, um, we did get to stay in the Rocky Mountains maybe a day or two. And, you know, we tried to enjoy it, but it was hard because, you know, my mother-in-law was fixing to pass away. And so, and so we went back home and got back home. And my um, husband, Alan, um, ended up getting very sick at work. He passed out at work. And come to find out, um, they found out he was diabetic. But um, yeah. anyway, they rushed him by ambulance. And that was before I even got there, you know, was able to make it home. And um, so he ended up in the hospital, too, the same time as his mother. And so they were both oh, wow. in the hospital when I got there. And I was going from room to room. And I did have church family from um, Henderson Church of Christ in Henderson, Tennessee, that was coming to sit with you know one or the other or both to give me a break mm -hmm. but I still did not want to leave that hospital and, um, no matter who was trying to help me and they brought you know snacks and meals and stuff like that from the church but um, anyway it, it was tough on um, my husband um, well my 
mother-in-law when I was sent with her she ended up passing away oh wow they're in the hospital and then my husband was getting even sicker and um he they had to rush him to a room and I remember the door slammed and I couldn't go in because he was passing away but he made it he made it out of it but he was still in the um, hospital for almost a month after his mom passed and his mom had arrangements for in Florida and so oh, wow. he had friends from there that paid for her trip to, you know for her body to be um anyway to go yeah to anyway they they arranged everything to you know put it for it to be put off and everything mm -hmm. so my husband got better but anyway that was a lot going on you know. I bet so but I, I wrote in the book you know by the different adventures still we ended up um having many adventures and mm -hmm. you know people with people helping us and stuff and so because he was without a job I was without a job so um but we yeah. had more food and stuff in our refrigerator then than we do now just about because we had you know God was um still taking care of us through you know the church through our church family and everything people just constantly brought meals over and food and so our money or or something you know so we were taking That's good care good. Of even without us having jobs anything so. and that's always hard you know i mean jobs like for me i'm looking for a full-time work again and you know i'm applying to places and i listen to my daughter because she is too and she's like mom i just don't hear back but of course mom is like sure there's something out there but i'm learning oh this is actually a little harder why like i'm questioning i know there's many places hiring i think it's everybody looking for a job they probably get overwhelmed and everything yeah, they, so they're, they're looking for help it seems like you know cause yeah or not i'm wanting to work after covid and also um, it's changed I, from I, covid that's yes, right now but still it's still going on you know it seems like yeah, it sure is. Lots of changes in the world and everything. So the book, God's Rainbow of Hope, I love that title. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one, well, actually, let me tell you about the one before this one. Because <laughs> then I ended up writing a children's book after all Yay. that. Uh -huh. I had a um, dog named Joy, and um, she was like a therapy dog and everything she went into children's homes and nursing homes and danced and stuff like that mm -hmm. anyway I lost that dog and then I ended up losing I got Sonny and then I lost him um before I got hope but anyway it's about um can you see it <laughs> yes I, see it? I definitely see it it's so cute funny sunny joy days and it's about the two dogs and the many adventures as you could tell somebody some little one got a hold of this one she, she might have been jealous of it because it didn't have <laughs> in it for some, but anyway it's about the many adventures um it's actually real pictures of disney world that i went to and oh um about you know farm the farms and stuff like that that we've been to and everything that and is so the, cool and it has a picture of the ocean and it, it has pictures it just has pictures that I took that children enjoy looking at, especially Disney World pictures and everything. Exactly. It's, it's a, um, the first one is, you know, The Believer's Journey is a nonfiction Christian book. It's more like a, a diary of faith. And then this children's book is a Christian book too. And um, it has helped children deal with the loss of a pet or even not children grown-ups have said it has helped them too but Good. Uh, and then this is a to me it's a non-fiction fiction book because i added some stuff to it that you know i would be sitting and watching the animals together and i would just imagine what they were saying to each other and so Aww. i kind of added some fantasy kind of stuff in it with 
you know, with it being a children's book. Okay. And then Aww. here's the Rainbow of Hope, the one that I've done. I, I and like the, I like all the pictures, but that one's my favorite because yeah. the blue skies and the water and the mountains, that's beautiful. Can it, is that close enough? Or? Yeah, that looks really good. Definitely. Yeah, you can see it really good. Picture of my family and hope right there, too. Oh, I hope it's my mom that's, in, in there, too. But yeah, um, there's a picture of her in the book of my mom because this is what this book start why this book started is um, I was sitting. I don't know if you could see that or not. Oh, okay. I see the picture of her because that's what, how I picture her maybe now up in heaven but um mm -hmm. and uh anyway um I did this book I I was writing about my grief and everything and also I asked friends to um I decided something came to me and you know said well you know you got friends around you they're suffering too during my grieving process, I thought of this, and so I had them write their stories about how they de were dealt with tough times in their life and how they made it with God's help and the Bible verses that helped them through it. And so while I was reading about their, um, you know, struggles and everything, um, it really helped me. It encouraged me, too. And so yeah. some of them their names you know in it and all that so it's you know in the book it it may have a name you know on each story but after each chapter I put thought questions and I make sure I put plenty of bible verses and so it's more like a bible study book for a class you know like that is study. really good I like that concept and yeah. I love what you said that adults are actually reading it too after they have a pet because your pets are like your best friends yeah. so it does hit hard yeah on the children's book yeah because adults can read that one too but on this one i guess it's more you know it's more for grown-ups and everything because it yeah you know and i try to make it positive but then also you know real you know real life mm -hmm. You yeah know, life is like a roller coaster you know you're gonna have you know <laughs> yeah it like is it keeps on going but uh, it's like a roller coaster you have your ups and downs which mine has been definitely up and down and mm -hmm. I feel like when I get down at times that I'm you know I don't know you ever remember going to the fair and there was these things you guacamoles I guess you call them yes uh -huh. and back up again well I feel like I feel like that a lot. So you know, I get, the, <laughs> get whacked it in the head again. And it's just like it's only God that helps me, you know, because I'm yeah I so much pain. And there's days that I just do not. I don't know how I can make it. And I, and I pray, and then I make it with God. So yeah, and prayer does help a lot, definitely. So, <laughs> but. but it's like it, it's um in honor of my mom and uh -huh. um, it tells mm -hmm. you know i tell about the virtuous woman which in the bible proverbs 31 which she is she was like you know so i, I did this in honor of my mom and, and that is so good that is so good that reminds me i had writer's block for because during cut because she passed right before COVID. And then mm -hmm. I had a writer's block during that time until a teacher from church. Um, she don't want me to mention her name. I wish I could mention her name. But anyway, um, she um, asked me to do email, I meant to do some Bible devotionals by email while people were stuck in the house. And so I started doing that. And so at the end of the book, it's those devotionals during COVID. And when people were stuck in the house, so but yeah. they just came. I mean, you know, like I said, I didn't. That wasn't my dream to be a writer, but 
it just comes you know the words just come for some reason because I don't know how I'm a writer because I can't even spell half the time so and I don't like reading um the only <laughs> I like reading is the bible so and I do have to have it online so yeah it's, it's not big enough most of the time you know I'm not able to see it in one that you hold in your hand I had to look at it online so I can make the words big um, <laughs> that's a, yeah yeah I like audible because I'll just lay in yeah. bed with my airpods and listen to it being read and everything but mm -hmm. then through the podcast I've learned no I actually like holding the book still but I fall asleep so fast I found the book like right on my chest and everything it's, it's, it's so when you when you are reading it it seems like so yeah yeah definitely so where can people find the book is it online for sale it's on Amazon but um I do have a website the the guy that um did publish this book um he um gave me helped me with the website and it's called uh, well the website is www.bigccindyclark.net make sure you put .net not .com because there is another Cindy Clark but it's not okay. me so <laughs> sure. but, um but make sure you put .net and it tells well it has my first interview which was with Mark Howard he has a Mark Howard show podcast but okay not to compete or anything we're not competing. We're I, no 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 you're fine I think um I watched a little bit of it yeah so I'm familiar yeah. and then that was my first interview and because he did an interview with me since I did the books and he's the one doing my redoing this children's book that I just mentioned and we're gonna we're gonna add hope in there in that book. and it's yay improved upon and everything so i'll Aww. be having that book on um amazon too um, yay i'm thinking about putting it on auto is it auto? did i say that right audible yeah it's some right. authors Me you either too. hire somebody to read it or you read yeah. it yourself well i do have a friend she recorded even my singing she's a professional singer and she, I tell her, she brags about my singing all the time. She's the one that encouraged me to um, sing out in public, like at barbecue festivals and stuff like that. Which oh. I don't like doing that. I don't like competition because I'll sit there and think, oh, I cannot sound as good as that person. Oh, I sure can't sound as good as that person. So um, I don't like the competitions and everything. You know what? Everybody has a different, unique voice, and when you sing, it's just the most beautiful thing. So, if somebody is telling you they love your voice, I would say be proactive and share it with the world. So, uh, and you know, and the big one of my biggest encouragers was, you know, um, Kimberly. She's Kimberly but she has her own band and everything and she's, uh -huh. you know, and she's always encouraging me she said I love your singing and she said I like what you're doing with it so um oh yeah. anyway, well that's so encouraging towards that and so I'm planning on maybe having her record the children's book and my brother Randy mentioned um that it's good to have that for, you know when you travel so children will have that, you know, to listen yes. to people. Yes, to I like that for kids for right. long road trips. And we're about to go on that. I'd rather him stay off of TikTok. I know they have a new kids version of um, like a TikTok, but they approve all the videos and everything. So I didn't know if that was something, you know, he could do, but listening to podcasts on the way i'm hoping he'll get into okay. that and find when he lies and not just be like mom you like podcasts because you do one <laughs> you uh -huh. know uh -huh. so i'm hoping there is one we can find for him for a six hour car drive but <laughs> uh -huh. now i know there's gonna be like some well 
We get to see Hope in a minute too, but I'm going to cut in really quick. We have another sponsor called Snap Bands, and I'm going to show my Snap Bands. Of course, it says Hope on it. It has the elastic here, which I'll be talking about too, but a little snapping it and saying the mantra, I hope I have a wonderful day, is what they strive on. So I am going to talk about them. The world is a stressful place for everyone with work, school, relationships, health issues, finances, and the nightly news. There is anxiety every day. Negative thoughts can keep popping into your head over and over again. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy of anyone loving me. Bad things always happen to me. If you ever have these types of thoughts, you're not alone. More than 40 million Americans are diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. Anxieties, worries, and fears can stop you from finding inner peace and achieving your true potential. You deserve to live your best life. Finally, there's an amazing new bracelet called Snap Bands that was invented to help you reduce your anxiety, control your OCD, and calm stress. So Snap Bands are a cognitive behavioral therapy tool based on proven brain neuroscience. And the way Snap Band works is amazing. Snap Band bracelets look like a stylish piece of jewelry on your wrist but its unique design actually hides a secret elastic band that sits right on your inner wrist, which is the pressure point for your brain's nervous system. When you give that elastic a light tug, you'll feel very gentle, soft vibration on your inner wrist. A gentle physical sensation is all you need to reduce the anxiety. And here's why. Did you know that the human brain can only deal with one emergency at a time? Well, whenever you feel an unwanted negative thought in your head and gently snap the elastic on your inner wrist, it enforces your brain to focus on the gentle physical sensation you feel, which instantly disrupts the unwanted negative thought from your brain. This gives you the freedom to reset your mind with a positive mental focus. The mantra words on your snap band bracelets helps you to refocus and reset. So there's seven different mantra words you can choose from on your bracelet. Believe, blessing, dream, fearless, hope, love, and peace. So just choose the mantra that resonates most powerfully with you and after you snap your mantra word to immediately reset your positive mental focus with a mantra expression like, I believe in myself, I am a blessing, I am fearless, I will always have hope. And that's just like your book. So I'm going to throw that in there. <laughs> We all know the terrible stigma in America is that associated with mental health. So the best part of snap bands is that you can calm your anxiety anytime you need without drawing any attention. It's stigma free. Now I'm going to throw this in. I have been wearing mine for about two weeks now and yeah, hiding it. It's like, I'll just sit there and go. I hope that things go well with me finding a job. It it does clear a passageway, I've noticed. And I do I do refocus on what's happening in the now and not dwelling on the past. So all right. Well, snap bands comes in a bunch of beautiful colors. Um, they so comfortably, when you wear the bracelet all day long, they're waterproof. So you can even wear your snap bands while doing dishes, taking a shower. I think you can go swimming too. So, but definitely the, what I love most about the snap bands is their mission to help everyone reduce anxiety stigma free. So they donate a portion of every sale 
to leading mental health organizations to snap out the stigma. So check out the amazing bracelets at www.snapbands.com. Spelled out, it's S-N-A-P-P-B-A-N-D-Z. When you purchase a Snap Bands bracelet, you are helping to make the world a better place. And talking about making the world a better place, I want to hear you sing. And I know Hope has her little thing going on too. I guess I can tell how I started all that. You want me to do that? Tell how. Yes, definitely. Well, it was during, well, after this first book, you know, um, we were looking for a job. And um, we both found a job working with special needs people. Uh huh. We're working. It was called Madison Haywood Development Center in Jackson, Tennessee. And you go into like a warehouse, and you know they the special needs grown ups have a job there, and you just kind of supervise them. Well, they started doing construction work. Um, and I have um, asthma real bad, and I kept having asthma attacks, and I just love those people. But the doctor told me I couldn't stay there because it, it would kill me. And so it just practically killed me emotionally. You know, it broke my heart that I had to leave. But yeah. during that time, I decided, well, you know, when I was sick at home, I, I thought about, well, I know what I can do. Because we used to sing all the time. They would that encouraged me to sing with them they love to sing and okay. sometimes we would c carry bands out and everything and I'd be the driver of one of them and everybody wanted to get on my van because I love to sing and we would sing church songs and there was this one blind guy that he just oh he could sing really good but anyway um when I got where I couldn't work there anymore um I decided well I'm gonna start um, sing, singing shows I guess that's what you'd call them and the uh -huh. first one uh, we had I had at the railroad museum in Jackson Tennessee and all of them came I invited all all them and uh, the blind guy sung and everything and a few other people and I started a group with my friends and everything and I decided to call it the encouragers and so we we, we would have clowns or, or Santa Claus or or something in all my shows, and mm -hmm. I just throw balloons around, and um, just a variety shows. Sometimes we'd have puppets, and I would do it at different places, and Easter seals would even come, and people, the community found out about it, and so they started grocery, I would leave grocery stores with a big old cake or something, and then food, and because they knew who I was, and so they would donate food. So we even had oh. meals. And so I just that's I so that. cool. And then um, I decided to just start. Um, my health went down with. Um, I have this crippling spine disease, and so I had eight surgeries and everything. So I decided oh. that I, I couldn't do that anymore, and so. Um, I started trying to go into retirement homes because I didn't have to do anything but go there. And I enjoy that. And so I decided to add my dogs to that. And mm -hmm. um, they were taught to dance and everything and hope dances and stuff now. And she's Aww. just show. But anyway, that's how all that began is um, I, I, had a, I started a group called the Encouragers. But um, now I don't have, it's just me now, or me and my husband at home. But um, I would like to um, start a, a group up again called the Encouragers. Because most of oh, that'd be fun. have either passed away during COVID or, or something. And so I've dealt yeah. with that too, in addition to my mom passing away. And um, I would like to, you know, keep, keep that going if I can because it's hard for me to do a whole hour by myself right now um I did that the, um the other day and it, I guess yeah it good. but um I would like to you know have other people um 
you know, do that and everything. Definitely. So we the group again. Yeah. Well, you know what? Go, go for it. Just move strong. You have that vision. You just take it and go. You know, I, I know for myself, I wish I was a professional singer, but I remember Best Buy when that, oh, how old was me and my friend? I think it was like when we were 13, 14, they had a golf place right next to Best Buy but we would run into Best Buy because they had a karaoke machine oh really <laughs> and we would take it and just sing we didn't care who could hear but you know I wonder why they always had the karaoke machine still plugged in if they know kids are running in and wanting to use it <laughs> maybe it was a selling thing I don't know Oh, and talking about karaoke machines now, back then, I would have to carry these big old machines, and now, it's, well, I do have a microphone, it's all in one, um, but uh -huh. now, just this. Oh, wow. And, or either the microphone, all in one, but it has the microphones, you can just put the microphones in there, and then just... You have a strap you can carry it but it's not heavy at oh, all how fun but anyway um I, I remember one time i had a big carry machine a friend of mine julie was with me and um she me and her we get together we would just laugh all the time we you know come yeah. up with all kinds of different things to laugh about but anyway she was with me and she didn't have her children with her but she did have a stroller there and it was pouring down rain and I was wondering, how are we going to get this, you know, electric thing inside without it, you know, destroying it or messing it up? Mm -hmm. So she took that stroller, she grabbed that stroller, and she put that machine in there, covered it up, and it looked like we, were, we had a baby with us when we walked in the doors and everything, but it was that big machine. But I'm just <laughs> remembering that, you know, it, it's come a long ways. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay, so what were you wanting us to do now? Oh, well, whichever one first you feel comfortable with. Okay, well, she's still kind of napping there, so I guess I'll sing, sing a song. <laughs> um, this song um, kind of, well, it tells about where we don't see where something is possible, that anything is possible with God. He's big enough to handle our problems um because he already carried the weight of the world on his shoulder already so okay yes. um it's called um carry carry me or but anyway i'm gonna try to sing it and i'm just now relearning it so um, bear with me okay there is a problem so big he cannot oh, oh okay wait a minute <laughs> I didn't even have the words to it, so I'm going to have to get the words to it. Sorry about that. Oh, no, you're cool. You're <laughs> so cool at this. <laughs> okay. I sang it the other day just fine without looking at it. Okay. Okay. There is no problem too big. He cannot solve it. There is a mountain too tall. He cannot move it. There is no storm too dark. He cannot calm it. There is no sorrow too deep. He cannot soothe it. If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders, I know my sister that he will carry you if he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders i know my brother that he will carry you he said come unto me all ye who are weary and i will give you rest he said, come unto me, 
are ye weary and I will give you rest. Oh, I love it. You got me swaying. That's good. I just, I, I can feel it in my heart. That was very that's beautiful. That, that's what I want. And let me see if I can get, I might have to move this. Um, okay. Video. Yeah. Yeah. See if I can get Hope to do tricks here. Move it around so we'll have a little bit more room. Hope everybody don't get dizzy while I'm moving it around here. <laughs> okay, Hope it's on. like, I know you have that treat. There we go. That's how my dogs would be. Yeah. She, come on. Here's your treat. <laughs> okay. We're trying to do <laughs> Walk up, walk. Walk up, walk. Oh, look at Hope. <laughs> high five, high five, high five. Okay, give it to me already, she says. <laughs> okay. Come on. Walk, walk, walk. Oh, how cute. <laughs> Come on. Hope, you're a star. <laughs> you're in your yeah. mama. She rings a bell to go out and everything. So, <laughs> okay. Oh, at least you get the bell to be rang i hear her scratching on the door psh, psh, oh. like from my dogs she's still wanting to continue she knows i have these treats i need to put them up oh hope she, she would do i gotta for... come meet you guys next time i come out there oh yeah that would be great yeah okay good job <laughs> okay i had too many treats okay that's enough Aww. Well, okay. thank you for sharing hope with us. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what she loves. Okay, let me get this situated. She here. loves to entertain. That's yeah. so good. <laughs> I she wish started, my dogs she, could do that. <laughs> she started when she was just a baby. And she loves it. She loves to make That's a happy. good thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she makes everybody happy just jumping yeah. around. I was like thinking when I was watching Hope, I go, we need a doggy mascot. <laughs> we need a doggy mascot. <laughs> oh, yeah. She would be, she would be really good because her name's Hope. I know. Really so, I, yeah. And I hope it's so beautiful. You, you wanted to hear the story about Hope. You told me. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Well, I tell a little bit about her in God's Rainbow of Hope. Um, she came along, someone, well, my husband gave her to me um, right after I lost my mom. And so, um, and then I had had surgery too. And then my other dog, Sonny, was passing away with heart problems. All that was going on. And so um, my husband got her for me right before he passed, the Sunny passed, and, mm -hmm. um, and um, I was trying to train her and everything, because all my dogs I've tried to train to, you know, do program shows and stuff, to, you know, so they can encourage others too, and um, train them as a therapy dog, but um, anyway, um, I, I, I decided I could not handle you know, um, training a puppy too. She was a runner. Yeah. She would always run outside when people would come to visit. She'd sneak out that door, run down the highway. I mean, we was on a busy highway. And even my neighbor um, next door was pregnant and I was on a walker, you know, after surgery and I was trying to chase her. We was all out there trying to chase her. My, my neighbor, she was my landlord. She also went to church with me. She was an elderly lady. And she was out there chasing her, so um, oh. I, I cannot handle this. And so I was going to give her to a friend. And right before I did that, I got an encouraging letter, on a card in the mail. And they had no idea that I was fixing to give up my hope. But anyway, um, the card said, never give up hope. Yeah. And so I decided to keep her. I wasn't going to give up hope, and, and every day I, you know, see her, I think about that, you know, never give up hope, no matter how hard it gets, because she's yeah. like an um, emotional support dog to me, because when I start getting upset, 
she'll come up to my face, lick my nose, and it sounds like she's saying, no, 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 mommy, no, mommy, no, 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 mommy. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. that, you know, dogs do, they can talk. You've heard dogs say, I love you. And so oh, yeah. I yeah. Try a little bit more on the talking part. And maybe she barks a little bit more sometimes if she thinks that I'm threatened or something, she'll bark a lot. But, you know, that's the only thing I need to, you know, train her on. But everything else, she'll go to, like, the hospital with me or something. Aww. They, they just are impressed about how well-behaved she is. That's good. That that's go really to. good. But, yeah. Um, she's very accepting. I wish I could have got my dog and take her to classes because she basically... I had fallen to the floor right next to her and had a seizure and she just licked my eyes nowhere else on my body. Lick, lick, lick. And I remember that. And I started to open my eyes, but the first thought, even though my head was so heavy, I was like, Abby saved me in a weird way. Like it was like, but she senses every time that, I'm going to have a seizure and she stays close to me. Now, seizure patients, we get a thing called Aurora and it lets us know. Mine is like 30 minutes before it comes, but it's like, what is that word? Fight or flight or well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I would always run and go hide because I, if I was at work, I didn't want somebody to see me have a seizure, yeah. but you know, I started to analyze before this happened because when I did that at Macy's, I actually went to the bathroom stall, but I fell and hit my head against the toilet. Uh -huh. Then it was like out of body experience. I saw our security guard going, come back. And I was just like, why are you slapping me? I could actually hear myself talk. I'm right here. Why are you saying I'm like dying? I'm not dying. <laughs> But it was the weirdest thing to go through. So having an out-of-body experience in my whole life, I think I've had three of them with epilepsy. So, wow. but it's yeah. very yeah. interesting. Different ones that have that say that, yeah. Yeah, so it's different, you know. I'm one of those, I've seen the light twice. Mm -hmm. And the other one, it was just a vision of me standing on the outside with that one. But I feel myself fall back into my body. And it's like, and when I was a young girl, actually, I've had four. One of my experiences was, I've never really talked about this. So this is a good one. But I think I was nine years old and it was my longest seizure. But all I was doing was climbing upstairs in the sky. And my mom was like, doctor said to let it ride out. You didn't ride it out. We got you in the car. And I don't remember any of this. And I was really, really sick. And I guess when I got into the hospital, my mom is like, you are not nice to the doctor. But I was a young girl. I didn't know what I was saying. But I remember hearing a voice say, we are not ready for you. And I free fell backwards. But I sat up really quick. And I go, where am I? What am I doing? And the doctor goes, you had a seizure. I go, okay, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> it was the... Yeah. So this marks a very special episode telling that story. Mm -hmm. But, you, you know, I was like, I guess when I go to heaven, I want to ask mm -hmm. God about that. Like, if yeah, everything. Yeah, ask anything, we'd just be glad to be there. That's that's the way, you know, I think, too. Yeah. There's so yeah. Many now, but when we get there, I think we'll just be happy to be there. We won't think about those questions, probably. I don't know. I don't know either. So I hear so many different scenarios and, you know, I keep open-minded. I go to church every Sunday. I love it, but it's like everybody, I guess, sees religion in different ways. So I just stay open, like to whatever they know. But for me, I, I go to church. I love singing. I mean, I almost, um, 
that I remember the doctor sat with me after I had this double pneumonia after my one surgery. I had um, woke up well with double pneumonia. I aspirated, which that's you know you pretty much a lot of people don't make it from that. But um, and then I had a, you know bad asthma attack. But I was in the hospital and for about a week and. The doctor was sitting with me and he says, you know, you're almost like, you're like a miracle because we thought we were going to put you on a ventilator. Um, we didn't think you were going to make it. And here you are fixing to go home. And I said, yeah. well, I was actually, I said, you know, because my mom had passed and I said, actually, I'm ready anytime. I said, yeah. I was, I said why didn't why didn't I go? Why didn't I go ahead and go? You know, and the nurse it was almost like she was an angel because she said, "But we still need you here." Yeah, said, it was all this stuff because you know it was COVID because I was in there during COVID and everything, and, and ended up getting COVID. And I said, "I just cannot. I, I want to go. I don't want to deal with all this." And she says, "But we need you. There's still more for you to do." And so. And then she was gone. So man, there's different things that do happen that people won't talk about. You know. Yeah. You know. That's but hard. I'm ready. I'm ready. Whenever, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm I'm not perfect by all means. I'm far from perfect, but I know my. I know I try. I try the best that I can, and I still yeah. this work. You know, every day. So. Yeah. And you're bringing hope to people. You really are. I hope I'm bringing hope, and I hope hope is. She's, you hear her ringing that bell. She's, she's wanting to. Go I outside. actually don't. I give credit to Zoom. <laughs> like they really. I sometimes when I'm doing this podcast, I couldn't believe it. My mom is vacuuming right next to the door. The dogs are barking. And I'm like, why do I hear that? And I go back in the video, you don't hear it. And I'm like, even though I get a little flustered, you know, I'm just like, Zoom does a great job. <laughs> so kudos. She's ringing it and she's wanting to go out. Oh, well, I also, I know, well, I want to, you know, through your singing and your books and everything, and I will have them online for www.keepupalivepodcast.com. I just, Cindy, thank you so much for coming on today. And my books on, well, you have my one book in your store. Can you tell us how to help people and me how to get to your store? So when you go to the main website on the top right, you have the links and there's one that says store and www.keephopealivepodcast.com. Yes. And, and what I'll do is I'll share that link on Facebook of where to buy the books. So I think I have to add the other two so definitely so we have your one on there but i'm going to get the other two on there as well for well, our the listeners book right now, the children's book will be the other one redone and i think it'll be about a week for that one it'll be on the oh, okay and then i had to wait a little bit longer on getting the other one the first one that i did on Amazon. okay it's kind of on the okay I guess this is the oldest one. It's kind of on the back burner right now, but because I don't have any extra of those yet, and it's on on Amazon, and it does cost some money. Oh, I forgot to mention on um, this um, Rainbow of Hope. You know, I did it. It was I had original one on it, and it had been redone. But how it was redone, a friend of mine, um, Tammy. Um, her name is Tammy Thompson. She um, got that book, the original God's Rainbow of Hope. And she said, Cindy, you have got to get this book out more. And because I was yeah. to on it, you know, because I already sold it to everybody I knew just about. And um, no, I don't do the, I don't do the books for the money, you know. Yeah. Because I had to pay to get them out there, you know. But anyway, she, um, Tom, 
uh, got in touch with me and she said, Cindy, this book really helped me at a time that I needed it. And so she said, I'm going to buy. She bought about 10 a month or more and she gave them out to people. I and like that. What she did is she also paid for me to get it republished and redone when I wanted Yay. to pay for that. You know, so um, because she liked it so well and everything. Aww. So she, um, and just give them out to people. That in yeah, school. I think churches that would be good to have well, them in the Sunday schools. Just every, I mean, not just churches, but just like maybe um, pun uh, funeral homes or or just anywhere mm -hmm. that people need encouragement, retirement homes, you know. Yep. Just wherever she was just giving them out. So, wow, that's so sweet. People got in touch with her and said that it really helped them. So I mean, I'm not bragging on me because I'm giving God the credit for all this because I, I yeah all this on my own. And I, what I try it, it don't replace the Bible at all, but hopefully it introduced people that normally won't pick up the Bible. Um to his word because i have a lot of bible verses in there and it, you know and it hopefully my life will or in other people's lives that are in the book will be a shining example for that's good that, you know it'll touch their heart to you know decide to turn to god if they haven't already or if they're walking away from god maybe to help them to you know to reconnect yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I struggled, I'll be honest, I struggled after my mom passed, and I needed encouragement myself, you know, so, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it's always, you know, losing a loved one, like I talk about my best friend, but I honor her, her name is Charity, but the one thing that we always talked about was being heard, and so I put that aspect in to keep hope alive so people can share their stories and other people can hear it. And maybe it resonates with what they're going through. So keeping that, I like to say, keeping hope afloat, <laughs> that's a good thing. So, but your story definitely can encourage somebody else. And that's very important to me. So you know, maybe also singing, you know, um, there's a different, I had, um, oh, I'm so bad with names, but he has a single he did called Healer. And it was just amazing to interview him. So, and I just, you know, I look at things, I close my eyes and go, God led me to where I needed to be starting this podcast. But since April 23 to February 24, I think it's like a thousand downloads, oh, maybe close to 120 interviews already. And I, I remember looking at that last night and I smiled and I say I smiled for myself because without God, I would not be sitting there. Yeah. being happy about helping people well, so two verses that really helped me um is first i messed it up like, oh, philippians 4 13 i can do all things through him who strengthens me that's one of my favorite and yes then, um, psalms 120 i believe it's 121 or is it 120 uh, i get that mixed up sometimes but i think it's psalms 121 I look towards the hills from where does my help come from? My help comes from God who made heaven and earth. And then he also made me and, you know, to add that. But yeah, those two verses um, is what keeps me going. That's, you know? that's really cool. And then my little um, thing I have on my mirror says never give up hope because that was that little card I got when I was about ready to give up my little hope there. But um, yeah it's such a blessing and i was just looking out at the window at this little little bird that's squawking at us looking in the window <laughs> squawking at us <laughs> well i know hope has to go to the bathroom too i was like oh. um but you know once again 
I want to thank you so much for sharing everything with us today. It means a lot to me to interview you and get to meet Hope and hear you sing and talk about your books and everything. That is amazing. Well, I feel like we're so, already best friends now. You're just so easy to talk to. So <laughs> I try to be. I try to be. I I even when I go out and take time for myself, I love meeting new people. I guess I'm that free spirit. Hey, let's talk, you know, so I and get I to know love, them. You know, I, 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 I would consider myself shy and more introvert. But then again, at the same time, I love to be around people. Too, so I don't know what I am for sure. <laughs> I observe a lot, you know. Yeah. I think right. it's really funny for me if I go to do karaoke, and usually that is at a bar. Um, but my ears, I ever say I say since I had babies, my hearing is really good good. And last night I was sitting across and to my friends. I mean, they're kind of far, but they said something and I got to look at laughing and I'm not even in their conversation. They don't even know, but I, I made a comment. I could hear that from here. You guys are funny. And they just laughed, but you know, it was, you know, two people having a good time, just enjoying life, their work and everything. So, you know, it's things, or you hear other people having really hard times in life, you know, so I kind of think I go there, there and I'm actually praying for everybody. I think that's what I really do because everybody has struggles and challenges and goes through things. And, you know, it just, I, I it doesn't matter where you are, grocery store. I was coming out of the mall and I can just feel somebody's energy and it's just a sad moment or even a happy moment I don't know who they are but I'll send them I always say love and light on it I, I send them love and light without them knowing <laughs> so but definitely really quickly I wanted to thank the other sponsors here on keep hope alive as I talked about, we had lifeonrecord.com, your interactive guest book for all events. Um, we have Snap Bands at www.snapbands.com. That's S-N-A-P-P-B-A-N-D-Z.com. The bracelet that helps you reduce, it goes kind of gray sometimes, but helps reduce stress, OCD, just overall anxiety. I use it for the cognitive therapy that it is too. So, you know, I, I'm excited and new things are always coming out with them. Our next one is Ogden Ventures LLC, Marcus Ogden. That's www Marcus and it's spelled M-A-R-Q. U-E-S. His last name is O-G-D-E-N. Dot com. He is a former NFL player, keynote speaker, best-selling author, and he has his own podcast. You got to go check him out. He's very inspirational and go-getter. I love that about him. Uh, Naomi with BridalShowsInc.com. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area planning a wedding or a special event they host about five trade shows out of the year so you can go meet different vendors i guess see their showcase maybe get pricing or set up that appointment but check them out i love their fashion shows <laughs> our next one is miles and smiles events.com miss deborah rose so her background is investigator, but she does handwriting analysis, lipstick readings, and she does different events where she incorporates this with the event. And you know what? She's 100% ac very accurate. So check her out. Then we have Bryce Harney at www, I hope, uh, BryceMagic.com. And he's a magician, mind mentalist. He's been seen on TV a few times now, but his magic is unbelievable. He does church 
church big events and incorporates with what you're learning and corporate events. So check out all his information. Then we have a TK hair salon, which do, 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 do men, women, children, they do the haircuts, the styling, the coloring, the perms. Um, if you need eyebrows, lips, whatever done, they're the ones to go to in Plano, Texas. Their website is www.tkhairsalon.com. Now, remember, even the, though I'm interviewing Cindy, if you have questions for Cindy, you can always use our phone number at 833-780-HOPE and ask her any questions. I will send it to her right away. Also, a new little segment on the website. You can leave us a voicemail. If there's something you want to hear a topic on, let me know. I will go digging, find it, and deliver. So other than that, wherever you find your podcast, you'll be able to find us. And, you know, like us on Facebook, TikTok, X. I call it X. I still want to call it Twitter. And then Linktree. We are just all over trying to bring these wonderful messages to you. Once again, Cindy and Hope. <laughs> Thank you so much. I enjoyed our time. Attention and all. She's she's determined. She's gonna go out pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will let you and Hope take that nice little walk and get her out and everything. Thank you so much. Until next time, guys. Do it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Oh. Thank you. Good, good. Until next time, we'll see you later. Love and light. Mwah.